Some time ago, I had bought and played with a Raspberry Pi, the Model 2, uh, 2B I think it was. Recently, I decided to uh, buy a couple of the Raspberry Pi 3s, the, uh, the faster and more capable Raspberry Pi. And that's one of those you see over here. It has built-in Wi-Fi and a number of things that the earlier one uh, didn't have. But this is really more about the analog discovery and the Arduino. And the reason is, one of the defects or uh, omissions or uh, uh, at any rate, not a feature of the Raspberry Pi is the analog inputs. It does not have any true analog inputs. What they recommend for that is a chip called an MCP3008. It's an 8-channel analog to digital converter and there's one here. At first uh, I was going to interface that to the Raspberry Pi and see if I could get analog inputs working. I decided instead to go a slightly different route, and that's what this video or this set of videos is going to be about. The one difference between the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi is actually a true uh, computer on a, on a board. It, uh, it has a, a Unix or Linux, uh, Unix-like uh, Linux operating system, and uh, media, I.O. Uh, it, it basically has everything that a personal computer has or, or pretty close to it. Not quite the same performance perhaps, but still none the function. The Arduino, on the other hand, is a, is a controller on a board. And it's closer to the hardware. Since I'm more of a hardware person, though I, I have done a fair amount of software in my background and, and firmware, I've always considered myself more of a hardware specialist than a software. So, a long way to get to. When I started thinking about interfacing the MCP3008 to the Raspberry Pi, I decided, well, I think at first I'm going to try interfacing it to the Arduino. Because you can control things a little better, at least in my opinion, with the Arduino. And you can also see a little better what's going on. You're not, you're not uh, buffered by many, many layers of software and operating system and drivers and so on. So that's uh, where I'm headed. Uh, the analog discovery, of course, is here. And what I'll be doing is wiring up a uh, an MCP3008 to the Arduino and then trying to program the Arduino to read from uh, or set up this and read from it and so on. Now over here, on the uh, computer screen, and this may not show up very well. Let me see if I can at least get a a little bit of a, of a view. Is the Arduino IDE, and the program that is here is an is an ADC sample or simple program that I downloaded from a website. I'm not going to go into the details of actually setting up an Arduino or downloading the IDE. I'm going to assume that if you're using an Arduino, you already know how to download all of that. What I am going to do, however, is go through a sequence of instructions of what I did to get to where I am. It does involve things like downloading a, a document from the Arduino Learning website, uh, wiring up the, uh, the MCP3008, getting the uh, software or the program that I just showed you, some people call it a sketch. Uh, you download that as a zip file uh, and then you load it in uh, under the Arduino IDE, and then eventually 
you execute the program down here. Now we'll come back to this, so if you missed the, some of these uh, instructions, I'll come back to basically what this is. But right now, what I'm going to focus on is the wiring up of the uh, schematic that's shown in this document, Arduino and MCP3008, which I downloaded from the Arduino Learning website. So if you want to get that and follow along, I'll show you uh, what I'm doing. The, the second thing is I have, in the course of some other videos, I have previously talked about analog to digital and digital to analog converters. I've also talked about the SPI bus, which is the way that the 3008 interfaces. So what I have done is I have taken segments out of those videos, and I am going to uh, uh, put them in this series as part two and part three. So basically, I expect it to be a four-part series. This is the introduction and, and basically wiring up the, uh, the Arduino to the MCP3008. Then uh, an, an extract of another video I did on A to D and D to A converters. Uh, then an extract of a video I did on SPI decoding, including using the analog discovery for that. Then uh, in part four, we'll actually execute the code with the wired up unit and show hopefully that it uh, will actually receive eight analog channels and, uh, and take the digital data or convert the analog to digital data and read that into the, uh, to the Arduino. So uh, if you already understand A to D converters and SPI decoding, you might want to skip parts two and three after uh, we've wired up the, uh, the MCP and then go on to part four. So let me go ahead and get that thing wired up uh, and then we'll close this video and move on to part four. I've now wired up the MCP3008 uh, to the Arduino. I have loaded the program or sketch that I referred to earlier, the one called ADC Simple, that I'll show you in a minute uh, how you can get that into your system if you aren't familiar with the with the GitHub system. On the right is the serial monitor. What is going on, uh, and I'll show you the program in a little more depth in a minute, it's a very very simple program. Uh, what it is doing is it's reading channel 0 of the MCP3008, I'll just call it the A to D. <clears throat> so it's reading channel 0 and then it's displaying the value on the serial monitor. Now I have inserted a delay of one second, a thousand milliseconds in the program. I'll look at that in a minute. But basically right now the uh, channel zero is tied to VCC, in other words the highest possible value. You notice that it's putting out a thousand and twenty-three. I'm now going to move the input to ground which is, of course, the lowest possible value, and you'll see that it goes to uh, a zero. And then, of course, if I look, pull it and just let it float, you get uh, varying values depending on uh, how much noise and DC level and so on it picks up. That's a high impedance input. You should never leave an ADC's input floating like this. So I'm going to go back to ground, and then let's take a look at the program. I'm sorry, I said ground. I'm at 5 volts. So we're now at 1,023. So now let's uh, look at a little more depth at the program in the wiring. Uh, and then we will, uh, in part 4, hook up the uh, analog discovery to the SPI bus and look at, the, at how you communicate with the MCP3008 uh, or the A to D converter. Here is the wiring between the Arduino and the MCP. I have uh, the red wire that uh, we'll look at in a minute connects to 5 volts on the Arduino. 
and it goes to pins 15 and 16 of the A to D converter. Pin 9 and pin 14 of the A to D converter are connected to ground on the Arduino. So the Arduino is supplying the power for this unit. And this is a very low power unit, so you don't need to really worry about overloading your USB connection or anything with this. Then four lines are connected between the A to D converter and the Arduino that are basically the SPI bus or the Serial Peripheral Interface bus. If you're not familiar with the SPI bus, I'll talk about uh, basically how it works in a minute. But fundamentally, these four wires are used to send and receive data between the Arduino and the A to D converter. Uh, it uses a protocol, like I say, that we'll talk about. So let's look at uh, what you have to do after you've gotten this wired up. Well, first, as I pointed out earlier, you should go to the Arduino Learning website and download this document that's called Arduino and MCP3008. It'll look like this. It has a pinout for the uh, diagram and it also has a schematic of how you hook it up, which is what I've been using. The next thing that you need to do after you've followed the schematic and gotten everything hooked up, be sure you double check your results. And once again, if you don't feel comfortable doing this kind of stuff, the voltages in this case are not uh, you know, extremely high, you have 5 volts and so on. But like anything electrical, if you're not sure what you're doing, get yourself a mentor, somebody who can kind of look over your shoulder and help you along. Not only will it uh, save your, you from blowing up your Arduino or, or your uh, a Raspberry Pi or whatever you're using, but also if you're working with higher voltage circuits, it can save your life. So uh, get this, download it, read it, follow the schematic, wire everything up. Then go to github.com slash no design slash MCP3008 and download that zip file. That zip file contains the sketch or the program that we use. Then, in the Arduino IDE, go to Sketch, then to Include Library, then to Add Zip Library, and then browse to the download location, that is the place where you downloaded that zip file. And the file is named mcp3008-master.zip. So you go to that file and then you click OK. And it will then load that into your Arduino uh, development environment. Then to run it, you go into the Arduino IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. You go to File, Examples and you should find a, an entry called MCP3008 Master. It'll probably be at the very bottom of the examples. You go down to that and there should be a program uh, alongside called ADC Simple. Click on ADC Simple and it should put that into your IDE. Then of course you have to compile that and download it to the Arduino to make it operate. That's what we have done so far. Let's take a quick look at Arduino IDE and I'll show you how you, uh, how you do some of that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is click on the Arduino and the IDE comes up. You see that there. It loads a uh, prototype, if you will, or template to download the library, you go to Sketch, then you go to in, uh, Include Library, over here where it says Add Zip File, or Add Zip Library, 
and then you browse to that downloaded zip file. So I'm going to assume that you've now done that and you've actually gotten the, uh, the particular uh, one that you need downloaded. Uh, when you're ready to run it, you go to File, then you go to Examples, and you see over here are a series of examples. And at the very bottom down here is the MCP 3008. Let me zoom in a little bit on that. And then you see over to the right of that is the ADC Simple program. You click on that and it loads the program. You then have the program in, in your IDE. So now let's take a look at the program and the one small change I made to it. In the program, a few things you should note. At the uh, top, before you even do the setup, you uh, have an include statement which loads a header file called mcp3008.h. That header file is part of the zip that you downloaded. So if you have properly downloaded that zip file and you have properly installed it into your library using the uh, include library function, you should have that. If when you compile, you get an error saying that it can't find that file, it means you haven't properly loaded that zip file yet. The next thing it does is it sets up a four pin interface, chip select on pin 12, clock on pin 9, MOSI, which stands for Master Out Slave In on pin 11, and MISO, which stands for Master In Slave Out on pin 10. Now in part 4 we'll talk about what those things mean. Then you call this function MCP3008 uh, with the ADC and what it does is this actually sets up the MCP3008. Once again, this function is included in the zip package that you downloaded. Then you define a variable called value and you read into that the ADC, in this case, uh, channel zero. The change that I made was to add a delay statement after this serial print of 1000, that is delay uh, 1000 milliseconds or one second. That way the, the values don't roll by quite so fast on the serial monitor. So we're now at a point where we have a program that will read the ADC. We have the ADC wired to the Arduino. Now let's uh, go to look at the SPI bus, which was really the, the part of this whole exercise, by using the analog discovery to do some SPI decoding. And that'll be in part four. So if you need any additional background before you watch part four on either A to D converters or SPI buses, uh, go to the parts two and three of this series. Otherwise, you can skip straight to part four.